Hello, I'm Dr. Ashok Jansari and I'm a cognitive neuropsychologist at Goldsmith University of London. In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about different aspects of memory. And in this first section, I'm going to be talking about reconstructive memory. Now, reconstructive memory is really interesting because most people think memory is like a filing system where you go into your memory system, like a hard drive, and find what you did on Tuesday the 12th of February 2015. But in fact, that's not how memory works. Memory is actually a reconstructive process. And the way it works is that when you're experiencing something, so right now you're hearing me, you're seeing me, you might be have a, emotional feelings, you might have a taste from something you've just eaten, etc. Your brain takes those five different senses and your emotions from the different parts of the brain where they're first processed and puts them together. And it puts them together into a packet. And that packet is the sight, the sound, the taste, the feeling, etc., of your current experience. And it creates some sort of what we call an engram, which is that combination of different senses and feelings, and it stores those away. Now, rather than us looking for it when we're trying to remember something as a filing system, what we think actually happens is that we try to reconstruct what could have happened. So in fact, memory is actually this process where we try to create what we think happened and hopefully get it right. Now, we know that this is the case because of errors that happen when we try to recall things. There's a classic experiment by Bartlett where he got people to recall or read something about ghosts, I think it was, and then he asked them to recall it a number of times. And what he found was that people were remembering something that hadn't actually happened. And the reason for that is they were storing it in their own way, the bits that they understood, and then later on, when they were trying to find that information, they were making errors because of the fact that they were reconstructing. And some people are good at reconstructing and other people are not. And in general parlance, we talk about people who've got good memory, people who've got poor memory. And part of that difference is to do with the ability to reconstruct. Now we can actually see this with brain damage. So we can see from patients with certain types of brain damage that this reconstruction is happening. So for example, many years ago, I worked with a famous patient in Iowa who'd had an aneurysm. And an aneurysm is a particular type of um, blockage within an artery, which creates problems within the brain and can actually kill someone. Thankfully, with this patient, that aneurysm was dealt with. But as a result of this, he did result, ha, get some brain damage. And after surviving this, this patient, known as RF, came up with the most bizarre memories. So for example, he claimed to have been the commander of the space shuttle. He also said that he'd been to the funeral of the president of Egypt. Now all of this could have been possible, he might have been an astronaut. Astronauts are important people. They get invited to famous, important events. But in fact, he was a postman in Iowa. And he hadn't been in the space shuttle. He hadn't been to um, Anwar Sadat's funeral. So we did a study where we looked at whether he was just coming up with these bizarre stories or whether there was something else going on. So we created a study where we told him a number of stories which we would developed to make sure that we knew what was inside each of the stories and that they were different to one another. We told him the stories, allowed him to read the stories, and then we tested his memory one hour later, one day later, one month later, etc. And what we found was that initially he had some of these memories, but he was coming up with these what initially looked like bizarre recalled and bizarre memories. But in fact, 
it was bits of story one mixed in with bits of story three mixed in with story five. So overall, it looked like a bizarre made up story. But in fact, it was bits of things that he had experienced, but he'd put them together in an incorrect way. So from examples like that, people with brain damage, but also the types of errors that we can make, like in the Bartlett study, or there's been more recent studies by Stayers and Hemmer, what we see is that memory is a process of creating what could have happened, and then we have a checking system, and that checking system is in the front of the brain. And that checking system says, could I have been the commander of the space shuttle? And that checking system under normal circumstances works and it prevents someone from coming out with a bizarre memory. So when you try to remember what happened for your last birthday, what your brain does is say, okay, what did I probably do for my last birthday? Was I in the country? Was I away? Did I have a party at home? Or did I meet pe people in a nightclub? What was I likely to have done? Which of my friends were around? and you reconstruct that memory, and then your, the front of your brain evaluates it to try to work out whether it could have happened or not. And we all make errors. So you'll have had the experience where you're talking to your friends about a holiday you went on or some, a party you went to, and you'll say something about so-and-so having been there, and your friend says, actually, no, Nadia wasn't there. Uh, she wasn't in the country at the time. What's happening there is that your reconstruction has created some errors and your friend is correcting that. And that's completely normal, but you wouldn't come up with, on my last birthday, I went into space because your brain will stop you from doing that. So what we see here with reconstructive memory is very good evidence that memory isn't a filing system where something happens, you store it, and then later on, you just go and pick it out and read off of that document. In fact, memory is this process where you try to reconstruct what happened originally. Your brain unconsciously, you're not aware of this, your brain tries to evaluate whether that could have happened. And then it kind of tweaks things until it's happy with it. And then you output it as your memory. So the thing to take away from this is that memory isn't a filing system, it's a reconstruction of what could have happened, and under normal circumstances, we do pretty well in remembering things. We might get a couple of details wrong, but generally speaking, the evidence suggests that we're really good at reconstructing what could have happened. That fades over time, but that's okay. As long as you're not making huge errors, you're doing fine. Anyone who can remember 100% of what actually happened is actually a bit weird because that's not something that we expect. And in fact, a Russian neuropsychologist called Luria had a patient called S who had this remarkable memory. And so they could show him a blackboard with a hundred random numbers written onto it. And 10 years later, he could reproduce that blackboard all of the numbers where they were. Now that sounds cool, actually it's not. Because today is more important to you than yesterday, which is more important to you than last week, which is more important to you than a month ago. Forgetting and being able to know that your recent memories are important is actually a survival skill. If you can't tell today, apart from last year, apart from 10 years ago, then how do you know what is important to you? So forgetting is actually really important. So don't worry if you forget things, as long as you're not abnormally forgetting things, your memory is working fine.